So I just hit my mid 30s and honestly, I should probably be embarrassed to admit this, but some of my all time favorite albums are still from those early to mid 2000s emo bands. You know the ones, My Chemical Romance, Taking Back Sunday, Dashboard Confessional, The Get Up Kids, Jimmy Eat World and so on. These bands were my soundtrack back when I was lugging around my portable CD player on the bus to and from college. But here's the thing, it still wasn't enough music for me because I'd always find myself searching for more. And for those of you who are around in the MySpace days, well, it was like a gold mine for finding obscure emo bands. And the one band that stuck out to me was called Races to April from America. And I'll never forget the song, the top half of the Everglades from the EP, The Syntax and Everything. Now, I already learned a ton from these emo bands, you know, your basic power chords, your octaves, all of the usual stuff. But what was happening in this intro? It was different, and different meant new and exciting. So with my pretty basic guitar skills and ear training at the time, I eventually figured out this progression. I realized it was one of those like hold the chord and move the bass note style progressions. So, while retaining this sound. Once I understood this, I started thinking about other songs that I'd heard that used a similar approach. One of the first that came to mind was Janelle by Fiona for a Friend from their album Casually Dressed and Deep in Conversation. Another uh, favorite record of mine that I still own to this day, and I've got it here. Um, of course I need to show you. Such awesome album artwork. I had learned the intro to this song a year or two before, but I didn't realize back then that it was using a very similar application to the top half of the Everglades example. It goes... So the bass goes... Oh, ascending instead. And when we get to this chord here, I love that the... the higher melody then... descends. And it creates this really interesting contrast. And there's more. My best friend introduced me to Four Minute Smile by The Get Up Kids. And that album has been a huge influence on my whole life and the way that I approach songwriting. And I'll never forget the experience of hearing the first track coming from his Sony Hi-Fi speakers. It was like uh, drugs to my 13 year old brain. Uh, the track is called Don't Hate Me. And it's another great example of this technique in action. this one because it has a subtle variation on the two different rounds. We've got, got this ascending melody through the first chords and then on the repeat you got that and you've got that fully descending melody there. So how can you use this approach in your own playing? Well to do that let me tell you about the first time I wrote something using this technique. Quick interruption, if you want more chord progressions like the one in this video join my free weekly newsletter. You'll get a chord progression landing in your inbox every Wednesday just follow the link in the description. Thanks and back to the video. The first time I remember using this moving bass note approach was in a song during my first year of college as a popular music student back in 2006. My friend and I convinced other students from the course to form a band and we were two guitarists, a bass player and a drummer. We ended up calling ourselves a Vulture Task, which is a random monster in Final Fantasy VII. Not the best choice no gig promoter could ever get the name right on the flyer. Uh, and honestly, looking back, it's not the greatest name, is it? We weren't around for long, but we did manage to write and record a short EP. And if I had to describe the sound, it was like two guitarists uh, playing Thin Lizzy style harmonies in Alkaline Trio songs. But but the last track on the EP, that's where I first remember using this approach in a song. I remember mashing up the ideas I'd learned from Juno and Don't Hate Me, and I added my own twist by adding this higher melody part. So it went something like this. We got that same chord as um, Don't Hate Me and top half of the Everglades. Then I went to that sus two shape, then the power chord, and then that major seven of mid third. And then on the repeat, I added this 
higher melody part here. And then back to the sus power chord and a major. And here's how it sounded in the original rough demo that we recorded. trip down memory lane for me right there. Uh, back then I was just piecing together ideas that I'd learned and now years later I can kind of see how this idea works. So I want to show you how you can easily write one. So let's break it down into an easy step-by-step -step process you can follow to write something just like it. First, learn this major scale shape if you haven't already. It's super easy because it's uniform across all of the strings. Second, find the chords you can use from the 5th string roots. Typically this is going to be the 4th, 5th and minor 6th chord in that key. In this case our key is this B flat major. And the chords are going to be from this 5th string root here. That shape we've been looking at already. There's also a dominant 7th shape you can use there. And a minor 6th shape. Third, start experimenting with moving the higher and lower notes within these chords themselves on the same strings, just like we've seen in all of the examples so far. So if we go back to our first chord, the major four chord, we can play it as a power chord, or we know we can do that major seven variation, or we can even do the sus two one there. And the same goes for this dominant seven chord. You can take a finger off and then add one up here. And the same goes for our minor 6 chord. As we know from the Juno example, we can go that way. The next thing I'd want you to do is to move to lower strings and higher strings to create some kind of variation. Just like we saw in the top half of the Everglades example, we can do the same here. Or we can go higher notes there. I don't want you to really think about the music theory here, more thinking about just going with the sound and using the notes from this major scale variation to help you find ideas. And something that I wrote recently using this idea was my band Mountains and there's a chorus to the song called Necessary and it goes something like this. Is there's lots more awesome emo chord progressions out there to learn but where can you learn them well i've got you covered because in this video here i'll share one of my favorite emo style chord progressions with you thanks for watching thanks to the patrons that support this channel see you in the next video